so yeah we can get started it's already 8:30 here so yeah please go ahead with your questions i had uh, two questions actually uh -huh. so yeah so so the first question actually was regarding the insurance actually anup so mm -hmm. i believe that you had told earlier that you will be coming to india during the december time and your company has given the has the policy of like letting you work in uh, from your home country for like 4 to 5 months right uh, so my question 3 months 3 months yeah oh okay sorry 3 months mm -hmm. so my question is regarding the insurance part actually so like when when like currently i have an insurance like i have a health in medical insurance so mm -hmm. For an Indian who has uh, come to like Germany to work, does he? Would you recommend for them to continue their Indian uh, medical insurance, or would you like uh, recommend that to no need of that? And like, what would happen when uh, when someone comes in India, or like if there is any kind of a medical emergency during that period of time, should that insurance be considered, or will the German insurance cover that particular part as well? Because I don't think that will, right? No, uh, the thing is, um, when the companies like this, like my company, when they uh, give you this opportunity to work from abroad, they also have a kind of a, a policy where they can um, cover you uh, from a health perspective, even in the country where you're working from. So they have this documentation okay. for me as well for the for the period of uh, time when I'm working from India. Okay, so, so for someone who won't be as lucky as you, what would you recommend? Like, would you recommend for us to continue because there are lock-in periods, right? So if, if suppose if I miss my uh, mm -hmm. insurance policy, then if I restart it again, then my lock-in period starts again. So the major disease features and everything that, that the insurance company covers, that will be lapsed. So would you recommend for someone like us to uh, keep uh, on going because that would be hardly a nominal amount of like five to ten thousand yeah. rupees depending upon the age would you recommend for us to like continue having that particular insurance even if we are settled in germany um yeah i mean if you are planning to work from india for a couple of months then definitely you should have some kind of insurance in india right otherwise it's difficult uh okay. i mean okay. especially in the situations where you are a bit concerned about the health insurance kind of topics because most of the Indians, as you know, they don't have insurances. They okay, just yeah. pay out of their pocket whenever there is a need, right? So yeah, yes, it depends yes. on your personal priority as well. If you feel like you should have a health insurance, then definitely you should have one in India because the health insurance that you have in Germany, they might not cover it when you are actually working from India for say two months or so. They might cover it if it's a short period of time, for example, if you're going to India for a vacation or something, but you still have to check with your uh, health insurance provider. Okay, okay. Thank you. That's one second and last question. It's mostly regarding the credit score, actually. So mm -hmm. like we have working in India for a while and we all have some kind of a credit like loans or credit cards as well, which, which we are using to build up our credit scores, right? Yeah. So tomorrow when we move to Germany, we, we, we might not need those kind of credit cards and everything. So and uh, as far as I know, if we if we surrender our credit cards or if we, if we don't use it, our credit score whatever we have built on that particular card uh, just lapses like we we might lose that credit score so tomorrow if if we move to germany will that particular thing affect like for example if i worked in germany for like one or two years and i want to buy a house back home in india so like now i now that i don't have a credit card if, if, if suppose i have submitted uh, if i have surrendered my credit card mm -hmm. so now i don't have any kind of a foundation of a credit score yeah. So, will uh, would you recommend us to like keep that credit card active with like one of the family members back home in India, or like just just the salary, just based on the salary that we receive in Germany, would be enough to like get any kind of a loan from from a German working person in India? Like, would you what what would you recommend for that? Yeah, I would actually suggest both. So, when I came to Germany for the first time, I had this credit card from uh, Citibank. And I kept it active mainly because of this reason, what you are uh, saying right now to maintain my credit score. So I kept it active for around two years. And then I deactivated it because I opened a NRA account. And with that account, I got a separate credit card. And I, I, I don't actually use it. I just keep okay. it active just to make sure that my credit score and everything is maintained in India. Right. So 
you don't have to okay. do a lot of transactions to maintain your credit score even if you do a small transaction just to maintain your you know the credit thingy then i think everything will be fine um, okay, i also okay. recently took a home loan and there was no issue uh, getting a loan i mean the credit, credit score was uh, i think around 800 i think 800 is the maximum right or 900 yeah i think 810 something or 800 yeah the so maximum. it was around 790 or 800 it was a very good credit score already yeah so, that is good yeah yes. so you mean to say that you bought a home in india like loan to buy a home in india yeah yeah, yeah. okay yeah, okay exactly okay thank you thank you yeah that's all from my thank you yeah no worries um yeah before the next question i just wanted to talk about this uh topic called um, the uh, translation right so when we are moving from india to germany there are a lot of documents for example your degree certificate or marriage certificate so sometimes in some of the cities you might need uh, a translated document uh, basically which means it should not be in english but maybe in german right so not every city registration they accept english as a document so sometimes you have to get those documents translated so uh, a company which i recently uh, found on internet is uh, its name is tomatoes and um, yeah i kind of spoke with them and um, if you guys are interested in these kind of services you can also um, visit their website so i will share the link uh, probably in the video once i put it on youtube and also can i i can share it on discord so just wanted to share this because this co question was coming up a lot of times uh, basically because some people are moving to cities like uh, oxburg where english is not uh, so prominent right so we are sometimes if you provide documents in english they might uh, get annoyed with that so it's uh, better to translate your major documents like the degree certificate or marriage certificate or even the birth certificate if you are uh, coming with your kids then yeah definitely try this service Cool. Uh, next questions, if you have any. Hey, hi, uh, Saurav here. Hey, uh, just one quick question regarding this, uh, the, the option that you just talked about uh, of the translation. Mm -hmm. uh, so is this something that we need to redo it? I mean, or, or once asked, then only we're supposed to do it. I mean, get, get the document translated. And if, if it is when asked, then can we do it? if we are in germany and we can do it from there only or do we need to get it done through india or how does that work just wanted to work, understand the process yeah you can also get it done when you are in germany the only thing is uh, germany is a bit expensive in these kind of services right so they are quite expensive i would say so better to do it and keep a translated document uh, even before you travel i mean you can uh, get these services online as well so they post the translated document to your address so i yeah you can give it a try and see how this is working but i would suggest if you are moving to a city like berlin probably you don't need it but if you are getting a job in a smaller city or even munich right so munich is a city which doesn't have a lot of english speaking people most of the people they still prefer german there so if you are moving to a city like that then definitely have translated version of your documents AC got it thank you uh, uh, anup this uh, translated document is different from a zap certificate then what i wanted to know the difference and what is the importance of zap yeah i think zap is more about uh, a kind of a verification that your degree certificate matches a uh, degree in germany uh, as far as i know because i'm also not 100% sure about that but uh, translation is basically one to one translation of what's written in your certificate to a german version of it so they they don't usually uh, you know do a background check or something it's just that they just check the document and they translate it so that's it okay oh, oh. yeah but uh, yeah it's also important that you get it translated by a certified uh, translator so you, you need to put, have some seal and sign of uh, the translator there only then it's valid otherwise you can also use uh, certain online services right for translation which which is invalid so the translated certificate need not be validated so that just translation might just work 
Uh, come again, I didn't get that question. Yeah, like like we said, right? Uh, uh, for example, my graduation degree is in English, mm -hmm. and uh, the 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 city I am going to requires it to be in German. Yeah. So, like for example, I use this Tomatoes service to get my uh, certificate translated. Mm -hmm. What about the validation? Will the translated certificate be validated as it is, or there has to be a different process to make that the to like uh, prove the authenticity of that degree document? Yeah, so this basically validates that they have translated only the original document that you have provided, but it doesn't validate the fact whether the, the degree that you provided is valid in Germany, you know, if you get that difference. I mean, the okay, so for that, then I'll need the ZAP certificate. Exactly, exactly. Okay, okay, got it, got it. Thank you. Other questions? Hey Anup, Karthik here. How are you? Hey Karthik. Yeah, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Anup, I have one question. Um, so I was uh, hearing from some other groups that uh, when I mean after we move to Germany and if we get a uh, work contract, uh, especially for applying for blue card or other processes, yeah. uh, birth certificate is required. So the thing here is, I mean, my wife doesn't have a birth certificate. It was like 35 years old. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So is it something which they ask in any process once we get a job in Germany? Is it mandatory for the dependent to have a birth certificate? Any experiences um, you had? Yeah, I mean, uh, I also uh, registered uh, my wife and my daughter when I was in Augsburg and also in uh, Berlin, right? So I have experience with two different cities. And that too, which are very, uh, too much difference, right? So Berlin is like the modern city of Germany and Augsburg okay. is like one of the smallest cities. Um, okay. So when I was in Augsburg, I never had to show my birth certificate, uh, neither for my uh, wife, uh, but I had to show the birth certificate for my daughter. Um, okay. Yeah, because I think for my wife also, she had this degree certificate and also... Uh, the passport already has the birth date and uh, everything, Correct. right? So I think that they consider it as a very good uh, proof. Uh, but okay. for kids, somehow they need the uh, birth certificate. Yeah. yeah, kids and myself, I had uh, for my wife, I'm finding a little bit difficult because they didn't have that uh, birth yeah. certificate given from the hospital. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know it's very difficult. Few months. In <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially 30 years old one. So I was just thinking because I'm moving next week to uh, Berlin. So I was just thinking, is it something required? Should I invest time or I could just skip? For uh, I don't think it's day. important. I, uh, so your wife's passport also has your name as a, a spouse. Yes, right? yes, yes. That yeah, endorsement yeah. is done. And she had the 10th certificate also, which has a uh, yeah. birth date I, on it. Yeah, I think it should work. I mean, they, they shouldn't be asking for the birth certificate in that case. Okay, thanks. Yeah, that's what just thought of the check. Yeah. I just carry uh, the document for uh, your uh, kid, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I have. I mean, vaccination certificate also I have for them. The whole history because yeah, exactly. I heard sometimes they will ask. Yeah, schools. yeah, that's needed. That's needed, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I also uh, got all my vaccination uh, details back from India a couple of weeks ago because uh, the uh -huh. doctor here was asking for those details. Ah, okay. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Hi, Anoop. Uh, Maria here. Hi, Maria. Uh, Anoop, uh, you were talking about the ZAP certificate, no? So I wanted to know, like, uh, if you can share any link where we can apply this. Like, I wanted to know the procedure. Uh, maybe Aditya can do that. He has more idea about that. Aditya, can you share that? Aditya, are you there? Uh, I think he was on mute. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll share it. I have the link. I'll share it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you will share it on Discord, right? Or here? Uh, sure. Sure. Anywhere, which, where, but where it's compatible. Yeah. I think Discord yeah. works better. There, uh, you will persist sure. that okay. information there, right? So, all right. All right. I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Any other questions? Hemant, SR, SRK. <laughs> Hi, 
So hi, uh, Saurav here again, <laughs> me. Yes, so, uh, um, so I don't have any question as such, but uh, so I have been so thanks for the list that you had shared uh, with the list of companies which uh, sponsor with Indian people, especially. Uh, so I have been applying diligently on on those lines on those companies, mm -hmm. and I've been receiving interview calls as well, first round, second round, even technical nice. rounds. So, so I'm basically project management analyst. Mm -hmm. uh, so in the project man management process improvement PMO roles, I've been applying. So second round, I am re I'm reaching till second. <laughs> so I I know I've been asked this question, and I, I, the feedback that you have always given is it's always good to have increase the number of attempts that you're doing. So that is how it works, right? Yeah. So um, I'm doing that, and I'm I'm changing my uh, cover letter formats and continuously modifying few things, changing as per because. Some of the companies they want photographs, some some companies they don't want photographs. So I I now I am starting to do that thing that I'm going through their blogs, understand and that what exactly they need, and then modifying my resume and cover letter and then applying it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's been uh, so yep, yeah, just just so I just think that yeah, there are openings. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm not sure if there is this competition that is coming up in in terms of other country or preferences. Is there something that you feel that um, because of that, probably um, uh, we are not, I mean, I am not getting uh, that. Um, is, this, is there any priority preferences kind of thing? Um, uh, I think there is, of course, a priority or preference. Uh, I mean, when it comes to whether the candidate is already in Germany or not, right? So that is a common thing. But if you are really <laughs> yeah, a that's... good candidate, I mean, out of the pool of uh, candidates who are applying for this job, if you are really good, then uh, they don't really care about it. As long as uh, you are applying to these companies from the list, right? So they are already uh, hiring people from outside of Germany. So I think, yeah, the... So as you mentioned, uh, you are able to reach until uh, round two or so, right? Which basically shows that they are interested in moving forward with your uh, candidacy. But probably you are uh, lacking certain skills that these companies need. Uh, so maybe asking for a honest feedback from the recruiter or the hiring manager would help you in preparing yourself for the next rounds or the next interviews. Oh, yep, yeah, that, that's a good idea. Yeah, I, I would definitely uh, strongly encourage you to send an email uh, to all those uh, companies who are probably rejecting you after the second round so that you can get to know what exactly you are missing, right? Mm, yeah, that makes sense. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, any other questions or any feedback or any uh, information that you guys would like to share from your previous experiences? No? So, uh, yeah, I'm also planning to come to India uh, in December, so mid of December, and we'll be working from uh, India for around two months. Uh, so I'll be back in February. So yeah, my company is providing this facility that I can work from India for some time. So yeah, that's what Aditya was talking about initially. Oh, that, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, I think nowadays a lot of companies are uh, allowing this because they need, they understand that, uh, you know, most of the people in Germany, they are not from Germany and they want to go back to their homeland and work from there for some time. So I think it's a good opportunity as well as good time for everyone to uh, move abroad, especially Germany, and uh, use these uh, kind of features of, you know, I don't think US provides this kind of uh, yeah benefit, but at least in Germany, I have seen this uh, quite often. So is this some kind of uh, regulatory mandate kind of thing, or it depends on company to company? It's not a mandatory thing, It's a, but uh, there are a lot of companies who are doing this and uh, for that there are certain rules and regulations they have to follow. And there are companies who are basically outsourcing these kind of services to a third party company and this third party company is handling all the logistics and uh, legal part uh, for these companies. Right? 
So I think there is a separate third party service or a business that is coming up for handling these kind of requests. So it's it's a really good time. Nowadays in wow. many job postings also we see that one month of uh, work from anywhere benefit. Yeah, exactly. So it's basically a good thing that you can work from India and stay there for some time, right? So you don't have to even use your vacations in that case. And also the time difference. So for example, now the time difference is four and a half hours. So when you are in India, you start the work at around 2.30 in the afternoon and then end the work at around 10, 10.30 uh, in the evening. And in the morning, you are completely free and you can utilize that time for anything you want. Uh, yeah. Hi, Anupaditya here. Yeah. Wanted to know if there has been any effect of recession in the daily lives, like like on a regular basis, not on like larger, broad job perspective, but mm. has as have you seen any or noticed any changes because of recession, or has it started affecting Europe? Uh, yeah, I think uh, as you mentioned, one of the important or the most affected part is the job aspect. So a lot of people lost their jobs. Uh, yeah, so that's a completely different topic. Uh, but on a day-to-day -day basis, I would say uh, I have seen price increase in a lot of things. So even the branded items or non-branded things, whatever you buy, the prices are increased. So at least 10 to 20% uh, price is increased. So that's the only thing uh, I see. Even the, the power, right? So electricity and gas and everything. So all of them are at a premium price now. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I have to update the blog where I mentioned about the cost of living in Germany. It's uh, pretty outdated now. Uh, I think the price has increased, I think, around 20% from what I've mentioned there. So definitely, I need to update that. Hey, but I heard that um, government is also giving some subsidy for the power, right? Or uh, is that also in place? Or how yeah, does that work? Yeah, recently government... Uh, sent out 300 euros uh, to everyone's account, uh, mainly to you know, reduce this inflation uh, impact on normal users or normal people. And they have also um, introduced this uh, reduced public transport fares, if you are aware of that. So in Berlin, we had this 29 euro public transportation for the whole month. And now from uh, 1st of January, they have uh, also reduce the usual price, which was around 80 euros to around 49 euros. So yeah, they have, they're trying their best to reduce the cost of, you know, public services. Um, but yeah, on the other side, uh, things like groceries and, you know, fruits, vegetables, and those kind of things are getting expensive. Anything else? Uh, anyone from this? So I know Karthik, you already have the visa or, uh, yeah, right? You have the yes, visa. Yes, hello. Yeah, I have the JSV. We'll be flying on, uh, I initially planned for second, but I'm planning to uh, delay it a week uh, because some other documentation stuff is pending. So second so of probably, November? Yeah, second ah, of okay. November was the plan, but probably I might travel uh, in between 7th and 10th. I'm just trying to change the flight tickets now. Just and, postponing a week. And you are coming to Berlin, right? Uh, because not exactly Berlin, because Berlin prices were pretty expensive. Uh -huh. Anup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. So one of my uh, friend was staying in uh, Chemnitz. It's almost uh -huh. three hours from Berlin. So mm. I could able to get an accommodation there. Um, so I mean, okay. it was pretty less. It was only 300 euros per month. Uh, it's yeah. inclusive everything. So I thought initially would be applying only for jobs, right? So it doesn't matter where we sit. Yeah. Okay, sit and apply from there. Once we get a job, maybe we could uh, move to the nearest place or a big city. Yeah, yeah, that's a good plan, actually. Yeah, um, yeah, living in the outskirts of Berlin for uh, the time that you are still applying for jobs, and once you get the job, then definitely you can move. Yeah, uh, because but yeah, I also consider that finding an apartment is really difficult in Berlin. So if you find a yeah. job, then you need at least I don't know, three or four months to find an apartment. That's the usual time. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. I, mean, I find I spent, I think, a couple of months to find at least a shared accommodation in Berlin, mm -hmm. but it was pretty expensive. And uh, that was also like a sublet. I can't do that for the city registration. Yeah. 
yeah again it's not going to help so that's why i had to choose little far but yeah okay i plan for it okay nice hey um, I, i just have one question for kartik <laughs> uh, so okay. in which uh, hey uh, so in which domain are you i mean in, is it in technical in which domain are you working can i just ask that just in to IT understand only, i'm working yeah. on project management and azure but currently for uh, germany i'm applying technical roles on uh, azure or uh, microsoft 365 ah okay interesting in in fact you know when i was just going through one of the core entries i know correct me if i'm wrong uh, so um, uh, during so one of the, in the core i'll share the core link uh, later so what that guy had mentioned uh, that uh, uh, they are so during jsv especially uh, they prefer a skilled uh, i mean specialist people to hire a specialist people instead of management role is that really something uh, uh true that where you, you mean so in interview in or germany, in germany in germany when we go for jsv uh, the, the the hiring people they prefer to hire someone for a specialist role for example project man- specialist process ma- management specialist instead of project manager uh, project uh, so is that is it true i but there are multiple I, comments on it and they were saying that yeah it is I don't know. I don't think so because I know few project manage uh, management people also travel to Germany in last few months and they also got the jobs. Awesome. The reason why I try to switch to technical is uh, most of the project management jobs and also needs at least basic level of German. Yeah. Because you interact with clients and many other uh, people in the team, right? German yeah. colleagues. So because I have not started yet, so I thought this would be a Uh, cheat trick to get a job Absolutely. easily if I go to technical path <laughs> and as they don't ask you your previous experience letters I mean whatever you keep in your resume would be the one which they are going to choose so that's also an advantage so based on all these things I prefer to take this route <laughs> absolutely makes him awesome all the best man <laughs> thank you thank you Anup am I correct or you see something different No, I think uh, that's correct. So once you are in Germany, no one cares uh, what kind of visa you are. I mean, you are yeah. in Germany and you have this job seeker visa, which is a valid. It's not a illegal way to come to Germany, right? It's a legal way. So once you are in Germany, you can convert the job seeker visa to an employment visa, irrespective of what kind of uh, job you are getting. But yeah, there is this uh, rule that you cannot apply to, uh, you know, small, you know, gigs. for example going to i mean being a supermarket uh, receptionist mm. or something like that but you have to apply for uh, specialized uh, things and i think management roles are also part of this uh, specialized skills so it, it's not a problem yeah, as long as it is in it what i yeah, also exactly. heard is as long as it's in it yeah. uh, when you apply for jsv in bangalore or any other consulate you also give your domains what technology you are working and when you get your work contract and when you go for applying for the work visa if you are applying for non it and here you have given it then there is chances that they might also not give you a visa yeah. but if it is just a technology switch switch within it it shouldn't be a problem and so far for the interviews that i have attended they don't even know what jsv is so they just asked okay have a valid visa for germany and yeah. do you need a sponsorship and when we say we don't need a sponsorship they are perfectly fine they yeah. don't even care what that visa is or how what we are going to do later so yeah yeah i think job seeker visa is a really good uh, opportunity for especially indians if they want to come to germany and if they are uh, you know really uh, confident about their skill sets and the demand in the market then i think and also you need to have some money or some backup right so, yeah, that's yeah. correct yeah the <laughs> initial expenses are huge <laughs> <laughs> the housing cost itself is a major chunk there <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 that's the only major expense i would say yeah well, the rent is the only expense otherwise everything is not that expensive yeah that's true uh, so anu one question here like uh, uh, my my current company in india they they allow working from anywhere in the world okay so uh, i can go anywhere and work so if i come to germany so my fiance she is doing her phd uh, she is currently staying in hildesheim okay so if if i come on a job seeker visa with work from anywhere what i have 
so is that illegal like i am working for some other organization and i have applied for a job seeker visa i am going to germany is that technically illegal uh technically yes uh, karthik maybe you also can share your experience how you did that uh, if you want to sure i can share i mean uh, as per jsc visa it's like you should not work you should only go for yeah. job search so if you are working for a company which is outside germany then that means maybe you are doing a freelancing or something what i heard uh-huh. is you might also need to pay taxes for it and you need to apply a different visa not a job seeker visa so to okay. un- avoid all these conflicts i mean i am also going to serve one month notice from germany so because my <laughs> company allows work from home i just go and uh-huh. do it there and also parallelly search but if you have three months notice like that and if you are going and doing work from home mm-hmm. uh, you might not even get the real benefit of jsv because if you are an immediate joiner and if you are on jsv there you there, mm-hmm. there are more chances that you know you get into some kind of immediate openings that could be a, a little bit easier you don't have okay. a notice you might get a little bit edge but if you say 3 months in between if they get any local candidate or some other things i mean there are mm-hmm. chances that we might also miss that okay 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 but but like if i come on on a one month notice so i i be yeah. there i said that I, it's just one I month heard, and i i think there is two months in germany the notice maybe anup can correct uh, even if you are if you want to move from one company to another company so one to two months range should be a good Uh, way okay. but more than that i don't suggest but again if you are going with one month you also need to mm-hmm. calculate expenses to come back india give your laptop <laughs> right, that right. also cost you another one lakh more right 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 yeah that's true oh, okay okay all right thank you okay then uh, we are over time already so thank you guys uh, let's talk again next week and enjoy the rest of the day take care thank you bye thank you bye bye